What is going on, guys, and welcome to Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 Platinum. I always love saying Platinum. Platinum um, Let's Play series started here on the channel. Now, you must, if you are come here from the, excuse me, this is a live commentary, so I try not to restart, but if you're coming from the Planet Coaster series, you may have seen in the last episode, I asked if it was okay to move this to this series. And there's been no bad feedback, people mostly agreeing, saying they can't wait. I do have another comment shout out, which is something I haven't been doing. But let's jump right into a sandbox. Here we are in Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 Platinum. Now, this is actually, this live comment is recorded the same day as the day that I made this. This isn't like Planet Coaster where I did them over two years apart. But <laughs> that's, that's different. That, that's just, that's a completely different circumstance. But jumping into Roller Coaster Tycoon 3. Now, this is going to take me some time to get you know used to especially because you know i've never really themed and been big into scenery but as we move along into this um into the series this is that's something i want to get into the very first thing you're going to see me do is go ahead and make a little bit of a fountain package in the front of the park so i'm, I'm starting here just doing a little three by you know a little three not three by three but a three across uh, pattern because that's the main entrance so i want to make sure they have space and you're going to see me what am I doing here? I'm, I'm counting, trying to make sure that I get the same number on both sides because I don't. I want it to be symmetrical. I don't want to, you know, have an uneven fountain. So coming out of the main, the main gate, we have this fountain here that I'm trying to make, and I'm gonna make it a little square, and then you're just gonna see me dig down and put some water. So like I said, I do want to get into some theming of this, and I, I'm really, I'm just really excited to do Roller Coaster Tycoon 3 because I have so much. Not expertise, but so much um, time played into this game. I used to love this game. And I forgot to mention, it is free. I got it free on the Epic's Game Store, which is a free account that I just had to make. But apparently it is now free on Steam as well, which is absolutely amazing. This is this game is so classic. I would definitely recommend getting it. So you're seeing digging in. I didn't. I probably didn't have to make it that deep. I did want to have the water maybe come up a little bit more, but that that's not too bad. So you can't really do like direct fountains or if you can i'm not sure how so you're gonna see this is a long you know sort of montage of me scrolling through trying to find a fountain that um that does look nice here so i'm scrolling through trying to find a nice fountain because i've only done this one time before in a roller coaster tycoon 3 map which is make the little fountain package in front you're gonna see how i go ahead and dictate what i'm gonna do is by is by just laying the paths out before i build so there's going to be some changes because obviously the paths dictate where the people go. So as I'm going along, if if you see me, you know, just place paths that don't that lead to nothing. It's me thinking in advance. So here's me trying to find a nice fountain. But here's the comment of the day: Dylan's Coaster Universe. This looks awesome. Just subscribe. That is so awesome to hear. I appreciate that comment that that coaster that i made in planet coaster I, I didn't think it looked too well but to hear you know multiple comments of you guys saying that it looks well and then multiple of you guys in support of moving this series to roller coaster tycoon 3 you know that's just really it, it makes my week and i and i love comments i haven't really you know done comment shout outs in the past but these you guys are being awesome with the support so you see me i'm putting two animatronics i was like oh animatronics do they actually move and there you go they do so i said hey if i can put those right on the water that'll look nice and then i have this big fountain that if i i was like if i can fit this in this will look really nice with how it's submerged in the water that'll be the main centerpiece even though it's a little bit to the left this you can see this is definitely a thrown together fountain package but i just i still tried to make it look nice with what i did and there's other than this main piece in this episode, there's not too much scenery, but you guys will see in the next episode, which I have, I would also re am recording today, so it will be up Wednesday, I'm not sure at a specific time, this one will be up Sunday, but that will, will be up the Wednesday of this week, that is, this next upcoming week. We do build a complete building around the food court, which took me a while to figure out, but I'm glad that it's over with. It doesn't look the nicest, but I'm, I'm glad it worked and that it's over with, but Coming up in this episode, right after you see me finish this fountain piece, I'm looking for you know something to occupy a little bit of space to the left. We are going to build a Morgan Hyper, and I'm so excited because how I got this to look with the f in the background of the foreground of the fountain package is absolutely amazing. So I can't wait to show off you know how that looks at the end. So here's just here's just a random little fountain piece. I, I need I just needed one thing to go over there, and it's not even it's not even like in the right 
it's not equidistant between the two things I wanted it to go between, but it doesn't look too bad. You can see, just trying to take a look from the guest perspective. So, as you see, it's not it's nothing grand. It's not it's not like Main Street at Disney World, but it, it's got a nice little fountain package when you walk in. It's a nice little Six Flags fountain package. So, like I said, you see me doing these paths, and I, I, I decided not to connect it because I don't want the guests walking over here yet. But this is just me doing future planning. So, as we're looking at the whole grid, I'm, I'm just going to try to... I'm gonna try to separate it into not necessarily equally sized plots, but I'm gonna use the path to separate the park and, and we'll try to do different sections if that makes sense as we go along. So where I really am starting for the first two episodes is this right is this right plot. And this really this back right plot when you look at the fountain. But so we have this fountain here, you're gonna see me extend this path over here because I don't want the hyper I don't wanna just have the Morgan hyper station, you know, have a long have a long connecting line to the main, not the main road, but the main path, which is what, if you've seen any of my older parks, which is what I've did. So I'm really trying to think and try to make this nice as we go along. So here I'm trying to find the right one. I'm not sure the difference between the two of them. It's been so long since I've played. What they both look like arrow tracks, but have the Morgan train style. So that doesn't matter. I'm just gonna go and use the older or the non-twister one. So we're gonna start with a little station, have a little, have a little pre-lift section, you know, nothing too special. Maybe like a little mix between Magnum and I, I haven't seen many Morgan Hypers pre-layouts, but I, from the POVs I've seen, I, I can generally get a layout of what, you know, a Morgan Hyper should be. So I'm going to turn on those height mar markers because I know that I want to go just over 200 feet, but not past it to something, you know, insane. I want to make it generally realistic. So we're going to have that 200 feet drop. We're going to ra round it off there. We're going to turn the chain off. And I do not have it testing yet, but you're gonna see me turn that on. You're also seeing me check that view because I knew if I built a hyper coaster right there next to that, it would look really nice. I'm gonna have a little bit of a tunnel section, just gonna have it go under. So, it, oh, it's a beyond 200 foot drop. I never even thought about that as I was building it. So I wonder, you know, what the actual size on that is. So going up into the first airtime hill, and as I'm thinking, you know, this it does go into this a little slow. You're gonna see me turn it on low friction. And this was something I didn't know they had in the game. This little turn piece here that lets you go from a straight, like from a steep drop into a turn is actually really useful. So I'm gonna use that piece to sort of bank it to the right. And then there was no, I really wanted to do like a big drawn out helix, you know, something that, I don't know if it's Mamba that has that, but the really drawn out helix, sort of like the one that's on Steel Dragon, but not of course to the same size of that that would make it the longest in the world something like that but you can't really do that in this game so what i decided to do is just use a few of the upward um upward sloped as you see i just turned it on testing to see how it goes but the upward slope turn pieces and just see if i can somewhat maneuver and somewhat make something cool out of those pieces so here i have it going up the lift i just want to see i want to see how fast it goes through these turns because i don't want insane laterals but i do I don't want it to crawl over the top and I think as we're going to see through this first test run it does go pretty slow over that but it does it goes through this a little bit slower than I would yeah of course that barely makes it so I'm going to flatten the turn out a little bit sooner and then I'm going to go dive back down and do something so you know it's not it, it's really a spaghetti bowl section of the, this part of the ride now that I think about it I, don't, I didn't really know what else. I wanted to do a few helixes, but I do think I'm, I made it look pretty cool. Here, I could not figure out why I cannot do, go down and bank at the same time, but I forgot that. It's because I'm at a diagonal angle. You can see I'm not like at one of the main right angles for the game. So, and for some reason, the, just the limit you're limited on what you can do when you're at the diagonal angle. So I come back, get right back on the 90 degree angle, and there I figured it out. I wanted it to, to sort of wrap around that other track. I feel like it would be really cool if I figured out how to do that. So I just decided to do a couple straight tracks and then try it again. And that, that effect, I think, looked really nice. So then we go down and to the right. And you just can see me come up and go up into a little bit of a mid-course. And I didn't mean to, but this is actually like when you look at some of the Morgan mid-courses, you can hear how they slam into them. And, when, <laughs> and this mid-course definitely does that. You're going to see when I get the POVs at the end. But so basically after this mid course, I'm just going to have a simple little airtime finale. I used, you know, the speed calculations of how that was going and to see that I wanted to make it a little bit taller and I should have definitely made it taller. Now when I see how fast it goes into that, but I'm just going to have a little dip into a little shallow left turn drop here. 
and then there's just gonna be a few more airtime hills and as you're gonna see you saw my plans with how I was building the paths you know a little bit out towards where we're at right now on this current part of the ride so I feel like if I keep building the path out it's it's gonna pair really nicely with that with that uh, airtime hill finale almost like if there would be a path directly next to Magnum's airtime, airtime hill finale coming back which I think is gonna look really really nice in the long run and you're gonna be able to see that from the fountain package and yeah I've got a POV coming up here soon as soon as I finish this I do end up turning it on low friction this first POV is a test you know without the low friction and I do end up changing you know these you see these paths I end up moving them so that they go under that last airtime hill so I do end up changing that just a little bit to make it look nicer because I was I wasn't able to get it to work how I wanted it to but it does still end up coming out pretty nicely like I said, I, I knew, I just knew I wanted to build to the right and have it go under that lift structure, but I'm gonna end up changing it at the end of this episode so that it ends up looking the way I want it to. And it does, you do get some insane airtime into this brake run because it's just, I, I forget how steep some of the slopes are on this, and it, that is an adequately long brake run. It does slow it down, and I decided to put two blocks here because you're gonna see as I go back and watch it. I, I don't want. The, I never want the ride to be stopped on the mid course, so in order to prevent that, I just have basically a free block right there. It's really cool to think about block sections when you make this, but sometimes there are some really inconsistent and just not, not very, um, what's the word? Not very realistic dispatches in this game. So sometimes it is unpreventable. But I'm gonna mute my mic here because I do have the first of two POVs, as you see me trying to fix this station here. I, I maybe could have put a block break there, but I just, I wanted to make sure I had an adequately long train and just ha was able to fit the queue line in the way I wanted. So there's the long train. And I'm gonna be quiet here because here's the first POV. So that's that for how it starts out. I did, re going back and watching that, I'm sorry for the choppiness. This, this is not how this game has ever run on my PC. It's, my computer's been on for a while, so I'm going to restart it, and I'm actually confident that it's not It's not going to be this bad normally. But going back and watching, you know, I do think I definitely need to put some low friction on. And I forgot to mention that it was a little bit of a night ride special as it, going into the POV as the time did change. Did I record another one? I'm trying to, trying to remember what's happening here. But definitely a nice first drop. I do love how it goes into that tunnel structure. And then, yeah, I, I just, I definitely think if I, did I put it on low friction already? I may have, or I may have not. Let's see here. Yeah, because this seems to be going a little bit faster already. Yep. That's what I mean when I said it. When I said it flies into that brake row, so you're gonna see I end up adding a trim as well as slowing down those brakes that are in the mid course. That is, wow, that's really fast. I didn't, I didn't realize it went through it that fast the past time when I was watching. But at least, at least the main brake runs long enough. Oh, that was some 
some choppiness there. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a trim right there. Because obviously after I turn it on low friction, it, it sped through that, that mid course a lot quicker than I would. So I'm going to add trim. I'm going to add a trim right here. And then you just saw I've really slowed down those brakes. I think I might end up modifying this trim later on though. Oh, I accidentally added a block brake. That could have been really bad if it... If it really <laughs> if it stopped immediately right out there that would have been really bad you're just gonna see me do some testing here I like to watch it make sure it goes through how I want and then later on you're gonna see me do some block testing because I don't want to have the ride basically ever stop at that mid course so going on I'm gonna end up adding the queue here I'm gonna add it I'm gonna add a little bit behind where behind the station a little bit in front it, it's actually came out really well how I built this I end up putting a Larson loop right in front of this because of the space I was able to save by just doing the queue like this. So there, you can see I, I, I always love to make big queues in Relicus Tycoon because I never want a queue to, to you know, not have enough space and have it be full. So there we have the coaster, but you see I've left this beautiful plot of land that I really think a Larson loop would fit in there. What did I call that? Red Mamba. So I always love using ride names that are already in the world, but creating my my own variation so you can see me finding the larson loop because as soon as i saw this pot of land i knew i had to put a larson loop in front of it and there we go i love how it fits you can fit a nice little queue line in there and boom perfect larson loop inside the coaster i really think this looks nice with the larson loop in front of it so i'm going to give you guys one more pov after this one but you're just going to see me watching it go through watching the train go over the lift hill make sure that it does go through that block before the next train even thinks of going to the mid course. I don't remember the night mode in this game being this long, but I was really worried because I was like, oh no, that is that train just now went through the mid course, so this is about as close as I'm gonna get as of an engagement between the two. So if it makes it here, then we're not gonna have to worry about it ever stopping, and it went through that block, so it's not gonna stop on the mid course. So that is our Morgan Hyper. I am gonna end the episode or wait i'm not ending it now there's still a lot more footage i'm sorry i, I was gonna do the outro and then end with the pov but i forgot i had a little bit more but as you can see there's the view that i wanted to have from the fountain with the roller coaster lift hill in the background and here is just the actual pov Yeah, the wear and tear on those mid-course brakes is definitely it's definitely going to be something that we're going to have to eye out. But like I said, I do end up moving the path to under that airtime hill, so I'm doing that right now, as you see. And I do end up doing just a POV of the Larson Loop, because as I was watching it, this Larson Loop is not accurate at all as to how they work in real life. This thing just flies around the loop. But I do. I think this ride did end up looking really nice. It does go a little bit faster than I want at some parts, but I think as we look through how we're gonna build the park around it you know it'll almost have like a magnum feel where it's this ride it's this park's classic coaster it looks like a half decent ride you get, you get some beautiful views of it i don't know if this will be the tallest you know coaster in the park i, I may just have to do a different another hyper or maybe you know an end-to-end -end one with the cable lift we'll see but here's me deleting I, I i wish there was an easier way to delete if there is one go ahead and let me know in the comments and this, this is just the first episode, so I know my commentary in this one isn't, you know, as well-versed as it has been. I'm sorry. This is just the first episode, so I'm trying to... I'm trying to get used to everything here. Seeing this, watching this sped up and trying to commentate over it is a lot harder than doing that for Planet Coaster. 
I will say. But this is just, look at this Larson loop. This is not sped up right now. This is how fast this Larson loop goes. This is insane. That's why I just decided to ride it. I saw that, how fast that thing was zooming around. I think that looks really good with how it is in the hyper. And that is going to end this first episode. The next episode, we will be doing an intimate impulse as well as a food court. So be sure to tune in for that. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Can you catch me?